Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. Check, check, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none of my day I walk on. Man, hey man, you know how it go, man. Y'all already know the game, man. We down here in Los Angeles, man. Yo, yo, man. So yeah, we out here, Los Angeles. Stand up, man. Listen, man. Make sure you gotta like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure y'all check out, check us out on Patreon. Join a membership on YouTube or something, man. Do something extra for your boy. Hey, man. Listen, man. Fly like Prime is in the building, man. Hey, I wanna. First of all, I gotta apologize to you, man. Got to apologize because that other video interview was the, that, that you didn't was, introduce me at all, did you? I did. You you came on, but you didn't say nothing. You didn't get in there. I don't remember that. I was thinking. I said about the you. lovely, amazing, oh, yeah. mid. Oh, yeah, you can't. You hear it so much. See when a nigga do it good. <laughs> he did. You hear me? He did. He did. Yeah. When I bring you in there, I bring you in. I don't come in like half cock. <laughs> I'm I'm deadly with this thing. Oh, okay. Wow. Conversation. Okay. Rules the nation. Okay. You know? I got you. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> So let's get back to it, man. So is there something you'd like to say? No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Man, so man, thank you for coming on the show again, Fly Like Prime. But like I said again, I apologize because last time we was in Vegas, we did an interview. It was epic. I only got one little piece on you. I got it, but I'm trying to put the piece together. And I only got you talking. <laughs> is that right? I lost everything, oh, but, lost I, it, but yeah. I paid money to get it back, oh. but they didn't give me everything, but, but I got you. I just gotta find that audio, then I can put me some little clips out of it, just so you saying certain things. It's coming. I just gotta get it done. Yeah, yeah we can do a voiceover though. But thank you so much for coming back on the show, man. Oh no, I appreciate it. Man. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, man. You, know, you gotta talk right up into the, the, pl the mic. The platform is incredible. Man. You like it, man? Oh, absolutely. Man, you had some dope conversations you know. too, man. You know, that's the good thing yeah. about it when you have entrepreneurs. Niggas, I mean newers. She got to cut that out because YouTube is dripping, man. Of yeah, every no. little thing you say, they be going in. Yeah, I heard like it, like the first fifteen seconds, they they supposed to not yeah. monetize or something. They use profanity. They the first something. minute. That's oh, not the first true. Minute? That's not true. Yeah, they will go through there and do it anytime, and I'm a living witness of that. So you just need to be able to be careful on how you, you know, kind of stuff you yeah. say. But to have a good time, man. If you can't have a good time, what's the use in doing it? Absolutely. You know, and I don't really curse. So if I say this, I say that, okay. But I usually ain't, ain't out here just cursing like that. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So, man, let's get to you, man. From wh where are you originally from? I'm from here. You well, from what yeah. part? I'm from uh, West LA. West LA. Let's yeah. see. Who banging over there? Well, you know, every set banging in, in LA. <laughs> I'm not from here, but I know what y'all are doing. It, you, you grew up around this stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know. Uh, it's the culture. It's, it's normal. It's normal, man. And it's like, you know, everything that happens is like, you just got to know how to move. It's you automatically know how to move when you like, you know, raised, raised in it. It's, it's, it's normal. You know what I mean? So what did you, how, was, what, was you in a crib neighborhood, blood neighborhood, pirate? What was you at? I mean, you know how we grew up. We like, we, we moved over, you know, you know, I grew up in a, in a single family home, so. You know, we moved around a lot. You so know, you I got really relatives didn't, you didn't from everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, we, we, we was more or less in, into, you know, back then, it's like, you know, you were raised by a single parent. Um, you got to figure out a, a way to survive, meaning financially, you know, to get things so, that people, you know, would have from their parents. You feel what I'm saying? So we was always, you know, about... You know, either sports or trying to get some money. So y'all weren't even thinking about none of that. No, nah, we had in the like streets. little crews and different things like that. But it wasn't you know like I mean? that. Nah. And I mean, you know, it's like being connected with a little bit of everybody or whatever. You know what I mean? And, you know, friends, it's different, you know, now. Nowadays, it's like you are from where you grew up at or where you're from. It's not necessarily true. You know what I mean? You don't have to be. You could grow up somewhere. That don't mean you're from there. You feel what I'm saying? But that's how people, you know, judge you and portray. Yeah, I, I actually, like I said, when I, 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 I like that because, like I said, I'm friends with a lot of people. And just because you're from out here, I bring those subjects up because just because you're from out here don't mean that you're necessarily in the lifestyle that everybody else is leading, you know? Absolutely. So I think, and especially the entrepreneur, when you're an entrepreneur, your mind think different. Well, well, it's way different, though. I think, like, when people pick sides and things like that, they... You know, they don't really have no other option. You feel what I'm saying? So I think, like like you said, it's an entrepreneur. That's a whole different world. It's a whole different you world. You know what I mean? And so it's like, you know, real real people that get to it and get money, it don't matter where you're from. See, if you if you subject yourself to be from a certain spot, why, why 
only get money in one section. You feel what I'm saying? We can get money with sections, or you can get money with just different people to get money. Real people that get money, I mean, they could be from wherever, but none of that means anything when it's about getting some money. You feel what I'm saying? You, you know, I done seen Crips and Bloods be the best of friends. You feel what I'm saying? All the way down to like the Mexican gangs. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, when it comes to that, I mean, you know, you could, you know, if you look at blue and red, it makes green, which Man, is money. That's you real. Mix those two, you know, you mix, mix those two together. Too. Yeah. That's yeah, real. That's yeah. real. So, man, just coming up, man. Let's get into it. Let's. Let, let, I need you. Need you to come on in and get with Fly Like Prime and do it the way we do it because you know this is first interview, really. Yeah, because nobody saw it. <laughs> that's right. So let's get him. So growing up in L.A., okay, because you know when you think about L.A., I th well, for me, I think about fashion. I think about gang. Coming up in L.A., I think about fashion. Think about gangs. Think about beaches. That's mainly what you think about when you think about L.A. What is your most fondest memory of L.A. between the ages of, say, under 10? Uh, riding bicycles, uh, just going to the park, playing basketball, sports, and things like that. You mm -hmm. know, um, you know where we, we didn't think about, like, you know, negative things or nothing like that. We, we really didn't have bills, but we still had responsibilities. You know, those are, like, some of the fondest things. You know, even if you went outside and got to a fight with somebody, you back cool the next day. You're not trying to mm -hmm. go blow somebody's head off or something like that since you got into it with them. Not like you know what I mean? Generation. They end up usually becoming your best friend or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, after a little scuffle. So, you know, things like that. You know, looking forward to going to, like, little, you know, little house parties when things were safe and things like that. You know, um, you know, meeting meeting a girl or something across town, and you know things like that. You know, um, you know, going to the mall and just like through the arcade and just looking. You know, and under ten, what was your dress code looking like? Because were you always fly even under age ten, or you learned about fashion as you got older? Well, well, well the thing is, my mom used to sew, mm -hmm. so she used to sew, and uh, back then it's like, you know, we used to get creative. You know what I mean? You know, me and my, my brother. Um, and then, like, the people that we grew up around, they were hustlers. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? They was, you know, getting a, their getting a bag. So, you know, they used to like to dress. You know, so, you know, people like, you know, um, you know, street guys, you know, you know, hustling, you know, pushing weight and doing different things like that. They used to get money and dress. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's the kind of era I came from. It wasn't really the... You know the white T-shirts and all of that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you know, getting getting fly, getting fresh. Be, you know, you look at them and be like, damn, that's that's the closest thing to looking at like uh, one of your favorite rap stars or something like that when they get dressed. So you you be inspired. You know, they drive nice cars and things like that. You know, what I mean, getting the money from the streets. So those are the things that you, you really inspired uh, to be, and it, it all has a lot to do with fashion as well. You know, just fashion forward. But it came from your mom as well, because you say your mom used to sew. Well, she used so to that's dress. Where, right, so that's where it came from. Absolutely. You know, my dad, he, he, he my dad was a businessman, but he used to, he's a fly dresser too. Did she teach you how to sew? Um, no, my mom, she didn't teach me how to sew, but what I did used to do was like take some of her like old like designer stuff, like Louis purses and, you know, Gucci purses and cut them up and just like make pockets and just do different things and had something that I might add like something that was not name brand and, you really? know, people, yeah. How old were you when yeah, you did that? I was that? hella young with that. I would drop it off to like a, to a tailor or something like that and have them sew it. I would cut it out and have them sew Why it. Why would you say to tailor when your mom sew? Like, yeah, here, mom, well, can she, you make this? Because sometimes she would, but sometimes she wouldn't. I was just like, um, you know, she'll give me the purse. What you gonna do with that? And I'll just keep it and figure it out. I, I didn't always like to tell people my sauce. I always like to show people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 just how I did it. And then the prime comes from when I was playing football. You know, I was mm -hmm. inspired by uh, Deion Sanders. So, you know, I just play the same position and just come through at the end of the day, you know, when I play football. Have you football. ever met him? Yes, I, I've actually, his son was one of my clients, actually, and I did some cut and sew for him and some business for him. And I was actually able to talk to Dion as well as dad, you know. Wow. So that, that was just, you know, that was just, you know, it just worked out like that. But, yeah. You know. So you already knew at a young age that this was the business you were going to come up into, fashion. Um, well, you know, the thing is, I know honestly, you say you did football, so yeah, I'm sure yeah, yeah, you yeah. wanted that football scholarship and it was all always, that. Honestly, it was music and then fashion. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Because I figured that I would leverage the music 
to get to be able to do fashion. Oh, okay. But it actually worked the up, up, other Opposite. way around. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, wow. I mean, it all works hand in hand, but it's just that's the way it ended up working out. <laughs> you feel what I'm wow. saying? I mean, you you um you own this music. Uh, you got you you got some new bangers out. I just shared one the other day. Yeah, I appreciate uh, yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I seen you on that. It had something to do with a boss or something, didn't it? Yeah. What was the name of it? It's called Ben a Boss. Ben a Boss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Ben a, I had to share that thing. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> that boy said he's Ben a Boss, man. Yeah. So, so I, what, what inspired that? And how did you come up with it? Like, you know, in this day and age, you know, music, a lot of people, I just was saying, $4,200 for a million streams is not a lot. Mm-hmm. You have to have a collective brand and know how to strategize to make the money off the music. It ain't like it was back in the days. Right, right. So, so how do you come up with what you're gonna do and what is the plan? What is the mission? Oh, the platform is pretty much is what you. So I utilize my my uh, my uh, fashion platform to leverage uh, my music. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's been times that where you know me and my brother would you know we would always do music. I would always do music too. But I would just, you know, we would always get other artists, you know, different things like that. And that's what they only did. And we would invest in them and push them. But what we noticed is that um, when you help somebody else out, sometimes it's like what they do the same for themselves. See, you need somebody with a certain drive and a hustle. And it's like, if I don't know nothing else, I can hustle myself. I can bet on myself, you know, and then you win. You know what I mean? That's what I've noticed. You know, and I spend a lot of money on different artists and help them elevate. And they usually leave you or they want to do things a different way and things like that. Because at the end of the day, you can't make them want what you, you know, what you want for them. And if they don't want what they, if they, the thing is, is like, if they don't want what you want for them, it's like, you know, what's the purpose? It's pointless. They're wasting time and they're wasting money. They're not utilizing the platform correctly. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, you know. You put yourself in position. It's like it's, the platform is laid out. So we're looking for a quarterback, but it's like, shit, let me grab the ball. You know what I mean? It's like I can bet on myself. And then I know what I'm doing this is because it's like, you know, everything, you know, comes together. You feel what I'm saying? If you notice, I like the music platform and the fashion platform is totally separate. You feel what I'm saying? And neither one depends on the other. You know, so so the thing is they do come, come, come you know, bridging. Instead of a photo shoot, I got a video shoot. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, I'm promoting the, mu- the, the the clothes instead of you know my clothing brand. I don't I don't get people asking for free stuff. Oh, I got an artist, man. Give my artist something. He gonna turn it up. He gonna make it look good. No, that's not gonna turn into money. You know what I mean? Since your artist is wearing that, you know, wearing my brand or whatever, they should be going to buy it out the store. You know, don't always want something for free. You know what I mean? P- p- you know, put some work and some sweat into it. You feel what I'm saying? You know, support. If you want to support, support. You feel what I'm saying? The music is just a extra thing that like, okay, you know, I can do this and, and and I know what I'm doing with it. So it's like, it's not just telling you, it's about actually putting it out there, showing you. You feel what I'm saying? I, you know, you got to move in silence. You know what yeah. I mean? I, you know, I stay in the tunnel. Self-awareness is so important. I'm just, just listening that you talk. Understanding you and understanding where you're going with something is very detrimental in order to be happy in a, on a whole for you to express it like that you know where you're headed and you've already you've come to grips of how you're going to do it and that's important and I think that starts with self-awareness yeah absolutely you see what I'm saying because you got to know what you want absolutely in order to be great in anything yeah yeah a- am I right no true true how important is God and family with you man um I mean it's everything you know you got to understand like you know family is a backbone support system you feel what I'm saying you know um you know, it's like, you know, some people come and go. You know, family is there. You feel what I'm saying? You know, I don't have a big family. I got a small family. You know what I mean? Um, and it's like I don't have no kids, but, um, you know, my kids are my business, uh, my music. You know what I mean? It's like I'm just, you know, different steps. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I'm able to cre- create different, like, you know, different items and different do different projects and uh explore certain things and, and put it all together. And and at this at the end of the day, I'm able to do create my own way and create my own lane. Because you you gotta understand everything that I've done, I did it with no help. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's, that's big. That's very big. And make a way out of no way. Make a way out of no way. So that's way. what keeps me motivated. So entrepreneurship, man, like I said, it's something that, that it's a new, it's a wave that, it's, it's, it's a good looking wave too. People, it's a lot of different people who say we entrepreneurs. Sometimes you can be a successful or unsuccessful entrepreneur. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on the internet say they entrepreneurs. You know, everybody <laughs> saying they got a brand. Everybody got a brand. I don't care who it is. You call anybody. Yeah, I got a brand. You can go on your Instagram. Models even got jobs who don't even get booked for shows. Just brands here, brands there. Is this stuff real? No. Not like brand. Well, no, here's the thing, man. Social media... <laughs> Social media is exactly what it is, man. It, it, you know, somebody could just wake up in the morning sitting there a model or whatever the case may be, living on their homegirl's couch. You feel what I'm saying? And be in fantasy world. You know, they think they can start OnlyFans or whatever, and they can make millions of dollars. Only, only it's a handful of people that, that get that. But, but see, the thing is, being original about whatever you do, and if that's what you choose to do, I don't knock it. But it, what, what it does is make people a lot lazy, too, though. Yeah. It makes people lazy, and then they understand they don't have those those certain qualities and you know and the thing is people can call themselves an entrepreneur but they need to know the full definition of being an entrepreneur because half of these people are uh self-employed not even self-employed you know they might make if you know if you're self-employed and some people don't know the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner you feel what i'm saying when you're self-employed if you're not there your business if you're not there she a business not gonna operate. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a business owner, you can you know stay in the house until the afternoon, and your business is still operating. The money's still coming in. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. And, and, and so, I mean, if you, you grab half of these people off of social media, like a handful of them, and they claiming that they entrepreneurs, see if if they uh, stay in the bed and or see if they just took off and didn't do none of their daily duties with their business operate, what they get money. You feel That's what I'm real. saying? The, the key is, is a financial freedom for me. Yeah. That's the key. That's all I chase is financial freedom. I don't care about nothing else. You know what I mean? Besides family, health, and wealth. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so, you know, if it ain't about financial freedom or about us building, doing some business and that's going to be mutually beneficial, I don't even, there's no conversation for me. Let me ask you this, though. You, you one of those guys, man, that, that you, you understand the city. You understand the music, man. Who popping when it come down to the artists, the new artists, the old artists? What's going on in the city outside of Fly Like Prime? Like, what's the, what's the one, like, you like that guy right there got it going right now? Um, from L.A.? Or from L.A.? From the, from the West. Well, the thing is, is L.A., it's just a lot of... I mean, you know, L.A. is real segregated. You know what I mean? It's just not like we... Like, unfortunately... We, we have radio stations, but they don't just support strictly the West Coast. I you think know that's I mean? everywhere, though. Um, so, so it's kind of hard. That, it's Houston like different outlets. Houston, you yeah, know, that's what I'm saying. Houston it's, go hard. It's, di it's different outlets. So it's like, you know, it's, it's wide open. You know what I mean? It's like what people listen to, they listen to the old artists. They listen to the artists with the, with the, with the machine behind it, of course. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm listening, I'm learning now that people find different ways to, like the, this generation now, they, they'll listen to SoundCloud to discover new music. You know what I mean? Um, some people are listening to like TikTok, but that doesn't necessarily create a superstar artist. You know what I mean? You might create a jingle or something like that, but you know, that might have been the only first record that they recorded. You feel what I'm saying? And they don't have no long longevity maybe because they don't have no experience like that. They just got lucky with one record. So it's like if you look at it, I got a friend named uh, that's popping out here is my, my boy Zoe Osama. I got the record with Run It Up that's on satellite mm -hmm. um, with him. And he, he's popping, popping, right? He's like that guy, guy. Um, consistent, you know, out here. And then I got the group project, um, the Fly Dollars. So that, that that's something that, that could be refreshing, give you, you know I mean, talk about real top, topics and subject matters. Well, you see I, what I'm saying? How hard was it? Like, okay, you see a lot of these rappers are coming up did well when when Mo three died in uh, Dallas, I could tell the music it shifted. It changed the music game for me. Yeah. Um. When when Nipsey passed away out here, y'all had y'all had so many different people do music though. How was it? Was it what did the music go quiet or was it still you know running up or just how was the temperature when you look at artists that passed away from out here? You've had Drake O. You had. It's been some a, a bunch of them. who kind of, you know, he wasn't on the level of Nipsey, but just artists keep dying. How does that affect the music and, the, and, and just the flow of things in the city? A lot, man. You know, when things like that happen, I mean, um, 
it, it channels onto the the negativity and it just puts artists in the box to where you know people will not really support or really give somebody a push and get behind something because you know what I would say people are scared to create no other you know other artists powerful artists like that again so the same thing can happen so people were scared to put their money behind different things like that and we scared the money away you know it does things like you can't get venues to perform you can't like uh, book clubs and shows and different things like that it might be a liability so, wow. so you got to look at that it's you real. feel what I'm saying it's like we go through these different things it's like you know it's like damn you know I don't know if I'm gonna be safe if I go there you, you know it's a flex to get back home these days Yeah, yeah. you feel what I'm it saying is. so those are the things you got to think about like I can't go man it's his favorite artist I'm not gonna send my kid down there you know I gotta yeah. send him with security yeah. you feel what I'm saying just different things like that you, you know so those are, the, those are the, the, the negative things you feel what I'm saying it's like I can't even go to Roscoe's no more you feel what I'm saying? I can't go get no chicken and waffles. Yeah, we want to Uber that. Eats that. We're gonna have to have somebody bring that's that to I us. Said. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? No, no, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's just going, bad. Like, like it, it makes you yeah. be like, ah, I'll just go another yeah. route. You know, yeah. even though it can happen anywhere, anytime. Absolutely, but it's just the stigma that it gives. But you got but the you, outsiders that come in the town. Yeah, if you in there eating or whatever, you're gonna be thinking about some negative the whole time. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You'll be looking over your shoulder and you don't know. People you winding you up. You know what it is. You know, you walking in, you don't know the area. You don't. Who's been hanging out waiting on the next uh, 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 tourist to come through? You're gonna go in there, take your jewelry off, everything. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna, definitely, gonna be I'm definitely doing that. Sweatsuits, not nothing, <laughs> nothing, everything. It's just, just what it is. But, but you know, that's that's that brings up another subject. You know, I, I've had guys on here that say that uh, if if he, if he, if if PNB would have would have checked, checked in, he probably would still be alive. Is that a real thing? Uh, I mean, no. No, not at all. Not like with him, he 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 had places out here. He was living out here. That's a what lot I of said. Time. So Didn't I, I say that? It's like I probably wasn't even his first time eating over there, but I understand his mentality because he probably felt like, you know, something like if somebody really wants something that bad and really willing to um, either either die or go to prison for the rest of their life, let them handle their business then if that they feel it's worth it like that. So I, I kind of get the mentality. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, if you really think it's worth it, go ahead and do what you need to do. So how careful you feel what are I'm you saying? Like when you're making these moves? You don't go jumboed out. When you do, if you do, you know you're ready for whatever. You, I see, that's the problem Problem right there, bro. Let me let me just keep it a thousand with you. I've been, I've been out in the streets for a long time, right? A long time. I never even had thought about occurred occurred to somebody trying to take something from me or rob me. You feel what I'm saying? Because... You know, I know a lot of people, I'm dialed in. You feel what I'm saying? Because if something was to happen, I would know where it came from or it, it wouldn't benefit nobody to, to, to do things like that. So it, it, I was just telling somebody this, like, you know, back in the day when we used to go to the club, everybody know everybody. So everybody got their jewelry on. That's just what it is. Nobody had to worry about it, women, guys, or whatever. You don't have to worry about none of that. You know, if somebody, it, it, it's, it's a special type of goon or somebody that you would have to be in their area, in their neighborhood, that's going to rob you. They're not going to drive to Hollywood mm -hmm. and sit out in front it of the club and try to rob you. They're, they're ready to go to jail or right. ready to die or something like that if they're doing something like that. This didn't happen, but it's just not, it's not a regular thing because people um, wouldn't take from people like that. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's just, just that's not what they're thinking about, not the goal. Now, if you you know what I mean, people have a bunch of money on them. You're not worried about that. People would be worried about what they need to be doing for themselves. You know, so now the thing is, what I think what happens is when you see these things happening on the news and things like that, people think that they can go do the same thing and mm -hmm. duplicate it. Don't see no consequences, especially when this COVID hit. Oh, I got the mask on. I'm not going to get caught. I was like, dummy. No, they're going to look at your phone. You know what I mean? They're going to pull up the tower and they're going to see where you at. Don't, don't think for one second you're not being controlled. They're going to pull up the GPS in your car or whatever cars was in that area. It's just about a matter of when they get to it. You feel what I'm saying? They're probably shorthanded on staff or whatever, but if it's a priority, they're going to get to it. They're going to they gonna catch everybody. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? It's just how it go. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know. Well, I just, like I said, when I look at these different scenarios and situations with all these, it, it's, it's sad about all the fallen rappers and the people who are trying to do something in a way to where it could bring, you know, 
change their family's life if it ever jumped out for them. Everybody's not, every rapper's not going to make it, okay? Not at all. And, and if, if you, now, I, I can't say that either because if you make it in a way to where you know this is where you at, wouldn't you just love doing it? That's different. You've got a lot of guys out here, they faking the motion, they trying to live it up, they trying to act as if they got it when they don't. It's hard trying to keep up that status. It's just a hell of a grind when you're dealing with the rap and, and the way it's built up right now. I think, you know, it, it, it's not something to play with. A lot of kids, I don't even know, I, I think I interviewed Rainwater, and he was like, this woman came to me talking about her son want to be a rapper. I'm like, why? Yeah, it's why? a dangerous job in the world. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to understand, like, like, for me, I don't like golf. You know what I mean? And it's like, me you neither. know. It's like, you know, I've been doing it before the fashion, so it's like it's just something that, you know, that I do. And plus, it's like I believe that I can drop some substance. And I, and I believe that I can... I know what I can do and what I've been doing. It's just about a matter of me, you know, pushing play, putting 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 it out there. And it's like, you know, I'm able to, to distribute my own music and work my own platform. See, you know, like when I come in from the era where you make a couple of songs and you need somebody else to manufacture, you, you know, do distribution, you need to go get a deal from somebody, you need somebody to say, uh, yeah, I like that record, man, I'm gonna call you back in a couple of months. And then nothing, never, you never do nothing with that record mm -hmm. because you don't have no outlet. You don't have no way to let somebody hear it. You feel what I'm saying? Now you, it's, just, shoot, it's a fair game. I push the button as much as, you know what I mean? I can keep putting them out. Keep putting them out, putting them out, putting them out. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's just like clothes. You feel what I'm saying? You know, fashion is like, you know, it's, being a hustler is a hustler, period, bottom line. You can hustle anything. You know, I could sell water if I made some water. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just the mentality. But it's like, I'm going to do everything. You feel what I'm saying? It's like... You know. Yeah. Do you um like? Do you feel like um, uh, um? How do you feel like the economy is doing? We we've been seeing some people that's in a scare. Some people are not. not they, you know, they laying people off on job. Google Aids off eleven thousand. Uh, what was the other one? I always shoot. Eggs are like twenty five dollars. Like, uh, that's here. They, they, they fifty here. <laughs> they was twenty five in Texas. Twenty five and thirty. For two and a half dozen. Two and a half yeah. dozen eggs, you know? Yeah. So things is going up now. Yeah, absolutely. But what's see here, the thing is, like, see, like, for me, from, like, my position, it's like, you don't do nothing but, like, you know, uh, you know, put your boots on, man. But it's like, you know, for anybody, it's like, you got, if you got a job, you need to be, why are you working? If somebody has a job, my advice, you need to be trying to figure out to, to work on you. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Don't focus on that job. Focus on you. Focus on how you can make an income to whatever you doing working for somebody without working for somebody. You feel what I'm saying? Use that as time to get it together and utilize your, your job as a hustle, not a retirement plan. You feel what I'm saying? So it's for an entrepreneur to have more than one hustle. You feel what I'm saying? I got four or five of them. You feel what I'm saying? If one don't work, I'm going to disconnect it and add something else to it. So I'm going to keep my, you know, I'm going to stay on the pivot. So it's like when we look at the recession and things, yeah, we feel it. I feel it in different places and different things, but, you know, it's, it's true. Being an entrepreneur, you know, you always start starting up different businesses. What's the lifespan you give a business to really try to work before you say, you know what, let me cut losses and keep it moving? Um, say about a year and a half. Really? You know, maybe sooner than that. You just got to forecast it. But you got to go in there with a business plan, though. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And you got to just, like, you know, when you're spending, you got to see, well, you got to be realistic. Sometimes things can take a turn. Like, things um, might be things you don't have no control on. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Over, you know? So okay. so it's like, me personally, I'd much rather invest in, like, three different things at one time instead of just one thing. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and wouldn't it be smart if the three things that you invest in or three different businesses that you start, they all complement each other? So you no, don't have to go through no other middleman to help do this part of your business? Uh, yes and no. Because sometimes you can be investing into the wrong things. And if, you, if they complement each other, that means if, if it starts going bad, that means everything can start going bad. You feel what I'm saying? Now, what I recommend for anybody, see, like, what I, what, like my, 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 um, my jump start has always been learn how to operate and set up a business doesn't matter what type of business you have. Learn how to establish corporate credit. 
You know what I mean? Learn how to get a paid X score. Learn how to, you know what I mean? Get some commercial lines of credit and some unsecured lines of credit. Learn how to get a business loan. You know what I mean? Learn how to build some relationships with people down at the bank. You feel what I'm saying? Learn how to keep your credit score good. You know what I mean? Learn how to leverage credit. Learn how to set up a corp, LLC. Learn the difference. You know what I mean? S corp, C corp. You know what I mean? Learn how to daisy chain, meaning setting up uh, DBAs up underneath your corporation. You set up like 10 different DBAs up under your corporation, and you got like, say, a $10,000 credit card up on your corporation. You just apply for the uh, same credit card as, a, as an authorized user up under the other one. So that means if you got 10 businesses with the $10,000 credit, that's $100,000 worth of credit. You know, that's just free game right there. You feel what oh, I'm saying? Awesome. Just um, things like that. Let's get back over here to the rap. You don't know you I mean, I'm just telling you. So even with the rap, I, I, I can tell you the whole no, thing no, about no, the rap, too. I'm about to too. ask you about the, the pimp, the pimp C. I didn't even know you knew or even it was around the pimp, man. I, I you, done, you know so much going on with the rap. I done missed out on it. I'm, I'm over here like, what? You knew the pimp? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, rest in peace, man. So um, the story is with, with pimp C, um, there's a guy named Rick Martin. Rick Martin was his manager at the time. Um, Rick Martin's uh, brother, Devin Martin, went to college with my brother, played football with my brother. You know, so um, he hooked me up with Rick because Rick was always an executive in the music or whatever. So that's how me and Rick and Rick was always out here on the West Coast. My brother was like way down in Idaho State with his with his brother. So my brother hooked me up. His brother hooked me up with his brother, and he was like, man. Your brother look out for my brother, I'm gonna look out for you. Like, your brother look out for me. So that's how the relationship started. So my brother came back, and then it was a guy named Pimp C, and we was Already. meeting with the brother, right? <laughs> and uh, he had a big old giant watch on, man. And then we, back then, me and my brother used to have a 10 freeway shirts. You know what I mean? He was down in Houston. You know, the, the 10, man, where yeah. you get that from? He's talking <laughs> to my brother. So they, they, they kicked it off immediately. Wow. They kicked it off immediately. They used to hang out and things like that. And then he, he made the connect with us. He's like, man, I get you to watch, man, for a little nothing. My brother always asks him about the watch. For a little nothing, man. Just bring my stuff, man. Bring my clothes to me, man. Bring my clothes. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, they they used, to, they used to sit and hang out. And then uh, he hooked, hooked my brother up. It was TV Johnny. Okay. You know what I mean? It was before. He probably was big out there, you know, in Houston or whatever. So he hooked, was, hooked him up with TV Johnny. was always busy. So we talked to him and hooked up with his, with his brother Tony. Okay. You know what I mean? His brother Tony. So we used to talk to Tony. And it's like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we, got, we got two watches. We had to, like, I don't know, I was to tell you, that's from the corporation. We had a corporation. We had a, uh, we had a, a business uh, uh, account. Uh, um, what is it, a wholesale account. Yeah, yeah. You know, so me and my brothers was out in the street heavy. So what we used to do, we set up a wholesale account, like credit, credit with, with TV Johnny, and then we used to we used to get like watches and things, and we used to sell them out here on the West Coast. You know what I mean? Me and my brother to some of the, you know, the guys with them, that we wanted, he couldn't get to it, because it was only out in Houston, you feel what I'm saying? And it was custom when he made the bezel, you feel what I'm saying? There's only certain artists that, you know what I mean? So that's how we was able to obtain, I think, with our lines of credit. We would sell, you know, sell, sell jewelry to, to other people, you know what I mean? And then we was able to uh, uh, acquire ours or whatever. And, uh, yeah, him and my brother, man, that was real sad on, on what happened to him. Yeah, well, how was and, the temperature uh, that day when you, when you guys found out? I think my brother, honestly, I think my brother was on, my, on his way to go see him, was supposed to see him, um, because it was at the Montreon Hotel. Okay. And my brother was supposed to go meet him, and he couldn't get him on the phone or something like that. Wow. I think Rick had called my brother thing later or the next day and told him what happened and it was it was all bad man it was, it was we couldn't believe it man we just couldn't believe it because not only was that not only was he was he was so close to my brother he was talking about starting his own label and things like that i don't know if people knew about that but he was talking about doing his own thing you feel what i'm saying and so my brother we was connecting the gap and we was trying to like pull me down so we could do some maybe do some you know records or something together and things like that because that's the lane my brother does he connects the dots you uh, know what I'm uh, saying uh, he's the one he's the talker yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. yeah that's that's what he does you yeah, talk I to him, him don't talk time. to him yeah. yeah don't talk to me talk to him that's what he <laughs> did you know what I mean yeah. man I just appreciate that story yeah. man I always give me a good pimp story man I yeah, didn't think man. I I didn't think I'd get one in L A but I got yeah, that, one that, that was man this is just sad but man. he was a talented was brother sad. man real yeah. talented love to get on that mic man yeah down south man yeah. it was, he, he go he he was hard yeah. he was hard man but no man thank you man um top three artists of all time dead or alive. Um, Number one, 
Number one. Sure Off man. the top, you Tupac. Go Tupac. Yeah. And any genre. Any Tupac. genre. Tupac. Yes, any genre. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, Tupac is is one. Um, number two. Number two. I'm a Jay Z fan too. You know mm. what I mean? Tupac, Jay Z. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Any genre. Sure. You want to say Diana Ross? I'm just asking. I'm just making sure he remembers that. that. Go with the rap. Oh, you want me to stay? Okay. All right. No, I'm no, no. She's trying to go to Charlotte. I'm just I know saying it. Want. Any genre. I mean, I'm Big Daddy Kane. I'm a Big Daddy Kane fan. I mean, me you know, too. You know, I ain't yeah. gonna hold you. Big Daddy Kane. You know what I mean? He was on the Vapors too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With with right. Biz Marquis. You yeah. remember that? Yeah. Yeah. We we really know yeah. what's going on. And don't make me dance. I still remember the dance movie. Do it. Let me see. Dun, dun. Yeah, I go there, man. Don't do that. <laughs> hey, you know, I got a movie coming out. I forgot. To what? Tell you. Yeah. When is it's, 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 it's coming? Y'all hey, already no, shot it? I, I did. It, it's shot. Hey, yo, I, I got. I got. It, it's, it's a weird story because you know I ended up being one of the main characters in the movie. Right. I think I saw. You never, posted it on your page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never did a movie, but I was, I was to do a movie. How was it? Was it was an action movie, and it was like almost three weeks. We was out in the desert. Um. Did you have we, to we, um, practice, like go to school? Well, let me, class let me for it? Yeah, no, let, let me tell you. So, you know, um, these people see me on my Instagram and it was like, who's this? T- he looked like he could play a character. He looked like he one of our characters, right? And they see me, they didn't know I did music. They was on my other page with my brand and they see me cutting. He looked like, well, he could play the character. So then, uh, but see, there's somebody I was following, they was following. It's like, let's see if you could talk to him if he's interested in doing some acting. So they sent me like a um, script. No, no, not even a script. It was like like some like paragraph or something. That I was supposed to pull out the camera phone and do like a video so they could mm-hmm. see how how do. So I was just sitting there. I was like s- sitting there or something, uh, you know. And I had to pull out and I pulled out a real gun on the thing because that's what it said. You know, it didn't say real, but I just pulled it out and like 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 I was talking to myself or something, like talking to somebody with the. And then I sent. I didn't hear nothing from them. And then like maybe like two or three weeks later, it's like we're doing a reading. Can you come to the reading? It was like two day notice, and I had some other stuff to plan. I was supposed to go out of town and everything. It was like, can you be there at twelve o'clock on Saturday? I was like, yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I never did a reading. I didn't know what that was or nothing mm-hmm. like that. I get there and I'm sitting in front of the spot. I get there early, sitting in front, all dressed up, and it's like, damn, are you sh- sure? I didn't see no cars or nothing. It's twelve o'clock on the dot. I was like, maybe we go just look at the door. I walked in the door. It was, I guess it was a back entrance. There was. This, Full of people sitting at a long table wrapped around. And I'm like. And all of them know. came for the readings. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was Chinese, you know, it was, it was white people. They all doing the readings. No, no, like the directors and the actors, okay. you know, they didn't look like us or nothing like that. You oh, know what man. I mean? Yeah, it was a real, like, you know what I mean? Right. These, these people do like horror films and, you know, they do nothing but horror films and like, uh, 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 what else they do? Like, yeah, horror films and like uh, nothing but action movies. So I'm like, and it's like, well, who you? And then these these other some of these other actors that were sitting there, they were sitting on the other side, like down at the end, and they all kind of like looked like they knew each other, right? And I was like, it's a little script. Well, you here, here, grab the script. I'm looking around and I'm trying to understand what's going I on. I just grabbed the script. I didn't know nobody. I ain't gonna lie. And I sat down next to like one of the, the writers or whatever, and it was like, well, you who's playing this this part? And I was like, uh. And I'm thinking one of these other persons, maybe they got me for a backup. That's right. what I'm thinking. Maybe they got me for a backup, right? And um, no, I was there for, for that. And I guess these other people said, we're going to read the script. You're going to read this part right here. And I was like, God, this, this is a script about like oh, 150 pages. <laughs> I said, I don't never even did this much reading in school. school yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when was the last time I read something like this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sitting there doing something like this. So anyway, you start reading. I didn't know nothing about the script or nothing. I'm Never sure acted a day in your life. Not at all. I mean, I act, but not like that. You know what right. I mean? We just got it naturally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't going to lie to you. So I'm, when you went out in the desert, did you, did you, no, you no, impress? No, no, so look, I, I read the thing. We read, and he was like, then I start reading. Say, oh, so then I started getting more intense into it. And then, yeah. I, I, like, I remember walking, and then the director came out. He's like, man, you, can you handle this? So I was like, Come on, man. I act every day, man. This is what I do. So let me tell you. Let me tell you the, the play. So then I whipped out my phone. I was like, man, look. I pulled out like one of my videos. He looked. He said, you could dress like that. He seen me doing something. He was, you could dress like that. And then the day was like, well, we haven't made our full decision yet. Right? So maybe like two weeks later, I get a contract. Shot to my email. I said, woo. 
Right? For real? Yeah, I'm not lying to you. I said, I'm signing. I'm not reading it. I'm, I'm doing a blue face right now. I'm not going to read it. I'm signing. You know not what I mean? Not the fine print and yeah, none. right now. Send it back. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I ain't even print it out. I ain't going to lie to you. I seen some money right there. I said, yeah, okay. So it had the budget Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, it had the budget. Nice budget. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool for me, but you got to understand. Because it's the first time doing it. Right. Everybody, so... Everybody now, what I found out is that everybody that was there, when the main character wasn't there, the the, the 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 actors were like real characters that do TV shows and stuff, and they was in uh, like New York and Albuquerque and Colorado, and they flew down here for the movie. You was the only you know what local. I'm, I'm only only like two two other locals and some of the extras probably, and I'm like, yeah, I was the only one from LA. I'll tell you that, you know what I mean? And I'm like, what's the name of the movie? It's called Bang Bang Betty. And they, they got a part two and a part three, too, that they're about to start doing. The, uh, and you're, all and you're in all of them? No, I can't tell you I'm in all of them. I'm in the first one, which is the... So, so it's an action movie, so the guy was like, out of 300 people, we picked you after I got that thing. And so I had, I had to memorize like 30 pages of script in three weeks. Mm. And with no experience, I was just trying to figure out that part because it's like, I don't memorize nothing. You know what I mean? I write mm. my songs on the was spot and do them on the spot. I learn them after I record them. Was it, um, it was a challenge. I had to take off. I had to take off. I didn't even sit at the office. I I would record it like it's a song and listen to it in the car. You feel what I'm saying? And things like that. Dang, and then I, I would lot. go over it. I, I, I pulled it off. And, and I didn't have them waiting either because my guy was like, you know, when they turn that camera on with that big budget, you know, when they turn that camera on, you better be ready. You better be ready. Else they'll send you home or something like that. Who you said better that? not this. My, one of my boys was telling me that. I was like, really? And I was like, the, the first scene, let me tell you, the first scene, I'm in there with my underwear. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> he was like, you're gonna, the, the, the director called me, said, you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna come down and you're gonna, you're gonna jump in your underwear as soon as you get here. And I was like, you know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a bedroom scene, you know. So I was like, oh, okay, I gotta. You know, and I pulled it off. You know what I mean? So and, and the character, how much of the character wasn't you? Um, like Percentage-wise, like, was the character mainly you? No, I mean, for the movie? I'm, I'm in the movie the whole, all the way through until the end. I didn't even realize that I was, like, one of the main characters until I'm like, I got, I got all these scripts. I'm, I got to shoot this, 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 this. Sometimes I would shoot, like, nine scenes in a day. You know what I mean? And, mm. and it was action. They had the stunt coordinators and all that there. They had to show mm. me how to, you know, do some karate and all kinds of stuff. You know, it was, it was crazy. Like, you know, somebody beating up on you and, you know, I had to, like, do some crap. I had to set people on fire and all kinds of stuff in the movie. You mm. know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and by then, and then, yeah, uh, it was, I did it. I pulled it off. And it's like, when I got down to the end, they made me change up a couple of things. That was the, probably the hardest part. You know, because I was already so used to knowing what I needed to know. And, uh, yeah, from there, um, yeah, from there we did to, uh, what did we do? Um, yeah, I knocked it out. They said I did did cool. I feel good about it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, we feel good about it. Yeah. You know, hopefully to do do more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just waiting for the trailer. It should be, it's a premiere um, in April. Say man, hey man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Say man, uh, um, fly like prime, man. How can they get a hold of you on Instagram? It's fly like prime. Fly like prime, man. Star Status Club, fly like prime. Check you it, know. man. Yeah. Hey man, thank you so much. We love you, brother. Hey, Mr. Maker. Yes, sir. It's been another great segment. A boss talk one on one. What a boss is talk. And, and that's out. it. Yes. Sir.